What's going on guys and a very very warm welcome to my YouTube channel. Now for those of you who do not know me, my name is Alex Gates and I am an online coach from the north of England for a little city called York and the idea and the intention behind me setting up this channel and documenting everything on here is to give you an insight into my journey because my journey is a little bit different compared to some of the stuff that you will see online nowadays. Um, now in order for me to do this, the first thing obviously we have to do is we have to, we have to go back to the start of that journey. We have to go through kind of where I've come from, how things looked over these previous years, and that can start to frame what we're going to be looking at over these next few weeks and months as I start to give you guys more of an insight in terms of what I do. The biggest thing I'm going to be showing you guys is an insight into blending, balancing a few different things and, and trying to get as many areas into my life, into the position as possible. So it's balancing my own bodybuilding, my own passion for bodybuilding, my own coaching, my own life, my social life, relationships, all these different things and ideally being in a situation where all those things are running at the, at the best possible place they can be. But the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to start to go right back to the beginning. We're going to go back into where I've come from. I've been in the industry now for 10 years, um, and obviously it's been plenty of things have happened over that time. A lot of different things have gone in that period of time, uh, and to essentially explain kind of what has been happening, and, and essentially the foundation that I've been able to build that I'm now going to be starting to, to push on from over these next few years. So... I qualified as initially as a personal trainer when I, was, when I was 18, fresh out of school. My initial part of my career was working on the gym floor. Um, I'm, as I said, from where I'm from in England, the, the little town I was, I was born near was called Harrogate, for any of you guys who know there. I initially started working as a PT in that gym in Harrogate, uh, essentially learning the ropes the first time and, and starting to get that understanding of, of what you should be doing as a PT. Um, alongside this, I, I was playing cricket, so I was 18, I was in that situation where I was, I was playing at a decent level, was never going to make it, but was enjoying what I was doing, was playing at a decent level for my local club, um, and was in a situation, so when I, when I was kind of 16, 17, I had an enormous growth spurt, and for those of you who, who know me know I'm 6 foot 5, I basically went from being kind of like average height to being as tall as I am now in the space of seemingly about 6 months which then brought with it the added complications of, if you imagine a, a stretch Armstrong model, you grab the head, you grab the feet and you pull it, you're gonna get something that's gonna be a heck of a lot taller but a heck of a lot slighter at the same time. So I was that stereotypical kind of tall beam pole, about as fragile a frame as you could possibly find and I was in a situation where I was getting injured all the time from playing cricket. Um, so I was desperately trying to work online, <laughs> sorry, desperately trying to work as a PT, kept flipping hurting myself, was being in a situation where I was always rehabbing things, was always in the gym getting over injuries and and essentially what I found in that period was that was my first exposure to actual training. It was rehabbing. I had back injuries, I had knee injuries, I had foot injuries. So I, I spent a lot of time um, getting those things fixed. And, and what I found from doing that was actually I enjoyed being in the gym more than I did actually being out on the field playing cricket. And I'm sure there are some people watching this who can very much relate to that. But I actually found that actually, nah, I want to be lifting weights here. I want to be challenging my body in that different sense. I want to be in full control of these different things that I'm doing rather than relying on other people. Um, in a, obviously, still a competitive situation, but then it being at team sport where it's other people um, are also playing a role in it rather than having complete ownership and being able to fully take exactly what's happening. So I went through kind of a transition period for a few years um, where gradually started getting more and more into training. Initially, was just getting that first bit of right, this is the gym, this is what I need to be doing, I'm starting to play about with a few exercises, starting to just get that feel of being in that gym environment for the first time, along with obviously working in the gym at the same time here, and got to a situation where I was slightly less of a beanpole, and I was slowly starting to understand what training was, or at least what I thought training was at that point. Looking back now, it's that situation where you're in your first couple of years of training and you actually know nothing, the sessions that you're doing, you've read from Men's Health, and you're like, oh, yeah, I think I know what's happening. I think I know how to set this up. And actually, in reality, it's, it's peanuts, like your knowledge. It's, it's one of those ones where you're like, ah, oh, I don't actually know anything at all. Okay, but that's the first point. Everyone's been there, and that's when things can start to develop. So, gradually got more into more, more and more into training from kind of like those years, like 17, 18, up until about 20. We're still a very, very slight frame. I'm always going to be a very slight frame. Um, the, it's naturally a byproduct of being my height that you're never... Unless you're, you're very, very blessed, you never go one of those people who's just an absolute, absolutely enormous at that height. Like it's, it's kind of that typical frame where it's long limbed, smaller ankles, smaller wrists kind of thing. Um, but I was slowly starting to build a little bit of muscle myself at that point. Um, and then continue beating for that period of time, kind of up until I was about 22. Continue to train a little bit more, continue just to start to find things, learn things, 
continue to develop my knowledge. Then moved down to London for two and a half years to work for a PT company down there. And that for me was my first real exposure to training at a higher level. The gym that I was working at, the way they did things was they pushed people to an extreme, which for me was exactly what I needed because I hadn't been exposed to that at any point in my training or coaching career so far. And it was in that period of time that is that, that period where everyone kind of needs to go through, where everyone needs to be in a situation where they do start to push things to an extreme. They do start to take things a heck of a lot more seriously than they ever have done before in their life. And for me, that was going all in on training, all in on bodybuilding there. It was going to the situation where, for example, I was, I was starting to follow some different people, starting to learn from different people at the same time as well. And it was that situation where bodybuilding for me was, was my entire life. I was essentially setting up my day to, to get the most out of it, obviously from a work perspective, but predominantly from what I wanted to do. So the time I would train that, what time I was finishing work, what time I was going to bed, what time I was getting up, what time I was eating, all these things were suddenly a big, big priority. And for me, it was then being like, right, okay, that's when I can really start to develop my physique. And that's also the time when I started to see the most change at the same point. So when I first moved down there, I was probably probably around 80 kilos, which obviously for six foot five or about two meters tall is, is nothing. It's nothing at all. It's, it's one of those ones where looking back again at that time, I thought I had a decent amount of muscle. Looking back now, I realized that I didn't. And over those two years, was, as I said, down that first foundation, you've been like, right, let's start to add as much tissue onto this as possible. Um, when I was working down there, I also ran through my first proper diet going into a photo shoot. I um, did a photo shoot in that first year where um, I said my bodybuilding was the, was the priority and it was what I was looking to um, build as much as possible. But I, that was initially transitioning into a diet. Um, ran through a photo shoot prep for the first time, got lean for the first time in my life. Um, and I'll put some photos up here, but it was at the point where I was, again, I, was, I looked like a skinny child and looking back again, comparing where I am now to, to that point um, is, a, is a big, big difference. But ran through that diet, got lean at that point. I was, I was 23, so that would have been back in 2017, 2018. I went through that diet. Uh, and then initially from there, transitioned up into essentially this quest to then build as much muscle as possible. As in having come from that situation where I was that beanpole, I was that, that smaller, skinnier guy, the next target was like, right, let's, let's build as much muscle on this as I can. Um, I'd never been that guy that was filling out a medium t-shirt. I'd never been that guy that was walking around and people went, oh, he looks like he trained. And for me at the time, I had never been that person that actually looked like they were a PT, which is quite difficult to say. And obviously it was quite a difficult thing at that point, but that for a long time was my motivation to be like, right, I now need to do something about this. I want to try and build as much as muscle as possible. I want to start to test the limiter in terms of how much I'm going to be able to grow. Let's start to dive into that as much as possible. So that was when I was 23, 24. Um, first time that I really started to push food into myself. First time that I really started to push training as much as possible. Got into log booking training. Got, book it, got really into kind of the specifics of being able to grow. Looked into sleep quality. Looked into all those different variables that we can then look into. Um, and, and to be fair, the amount of muscle I managed to build in that time was, was a decent amount. And I still was relatively raw to it, I was still relatively new to it. Obviously, I'd, I had been training, as like I said, for five, six years, years beforehand, but it, it was still that, that situation where, again, I, I, the amount I actually knew was still relatively low because I was exposing myself to um, this amount of work and I was exposing myself to just going all in on this, I was still able to build a decent amount. So for a period of time from kind of 2017, 2018, probably up until about 2020, um, the vast majority of that was spent in a surplus eating, growing, training, being obsessive over all those smaller variables. And like I said, just, just essentially putting as much muscle onto my frame as I could. And like I said, I was able to build a decent amount in that time, was able to grow a decent amount. Um, then we got to 2020, I left London at that point, came back up north, then lockdown hit, which obviously was a very difficult time for everyone, but especially as guys in the coaching industry and especially people who took bodybuilding more seriously. So I was living back up north at that point, had a small period of time living at home with my family, then moved out again. Uh, to live in my own place, but then had a home, or not a home gym, but kind of like a few bits of equipment back at my parents' house, was traveling between those two different points, trying to train, trying to keep things ticking over as much as possible, in and out of obviously lockdowns, in and out of being back in the gym, essentially in a situation for probably a couple of years where consistency was just very, very difficult to get into, which for me, I always find quite difficult because I'm one of these people that runs on, on routine, that runs on the same thing happening day by day. And then fast forward a couple of years, we're still able to, to again, still make a decent amount of progress that period of time because I was, I was living my life in a situation where that was to a certain extent inevitable, but 
was more kind of spinning the wheels until we got to about 2021, 2022, so over the last couple of years, which as things started to settle down, as I was able to get into a more consistent gym environment, and essentially because we had gyms open consistently then, was able just to really get things moving, that's when things started to really accelerate and things really started to change. So as I did that, as we got into the start of 2022, I started to get this itch. I started to get this, this idea of, oh, you know what? I want to, I want to do a diet at some point. I want to see how much, how much tissue is now underneath uh, and essentially then see the difference compared to when I'd done that previous photo shoot in 2017, 2018. I'm like, right, I want to see, I want to see what I've built because one of the hardest parts about growing for an extended period of time is you don't know. You don't know just how much muscle has been put underneath because when you're sitting at high levels of body fat, you're then a bit like, oh, well, I'm stronger. I'm filling out t-shirts better, but I don't actually know what I look like. So, Back in 2022, I was then kind of like, right, at some point this year, I'm going to run through a diet again. I'm going to, I'm going to test that now and see what is, what is underneath there. Um, I also got assisted by this point as well. So I first started uh, using anabolics in 2021, midway through that. A decision that had been coming for a long time. A decision that was based on a few factors. I, I wanted to test the limiter of what I was able to push my physique to, as well as being able to um, coach that side of things as well. And um, so I had that in the background as well, that obviously had, had made differences in terms of what I was doing. But as I was, as I was then moving th through 2022, it was then being in a situation where, right, let's, let's start to set time frames, let's start to put ideas and dates in mind of when I can start to diet down. And, and essentially kind of like, right, this is now me going to be showcasing my physique and what I've been able to build and be able to see that comparison between essentially photo number one and photo number two. Now, during this time, weight had come up by a very, very good amount just simply having been eating a, a vast amount of food for an extended period of time and training consistently for an extended period of time had meant I'd gone from um, my, my lightest around that previous photo shoot, which was about 78 kilos, up to about 115 kilo mark, which sounds like a massive difference, but because it had come over an extended period of time, wasn't anything too dramatic. For me, that was, it took a heck of a lot of getting used to, and that was an enormous amount of weight to be carrying, which obviously came with the difficulties of just getting used to walking around being at that weight getting used to little things like walking up and down stairs and, and everything being a heck of a lot more difficult, but was a very, very essential part of my journey. Then as we got started to get a bit deeper in 2022, it's been more like, right, okay, let's, let's start to think about seeing this as an, an end point for this push up. Let's start to think about like, right, this is when the diet is going to start to come in and start to get data mined from there. So in 2022, the peak of that weight was that 115 kilo mark. That was in about April, May time. Well, initially then the the setup and the way we went about things changed was going from like rather than pushing calories in as hard as possible it was pulled back to maintenance roughly kind of holding consolidating that body weight before the actual dieting process things started to start to kick in and that photo shoot prep which it ended up being initially was just set up as a diet but ended up becoming a photo shoot prep started more like around june, june time ish initially taking some body weight off initially starting to get the body back into slightly healthier states was not running at that maximum weight and then started to build up over time from there. And then as I reached kind of September, October time, 2022, that's when the actual photo shoot prep really started to begin. So when it started to become a lot more serious, it started to become a lot more right. The condition I'm looking to get to is now significantly beyond where I've been before. And again, that came in for a few reasons. Now, in this time I'd moved off the gym floor, I'd also moved into the online world. I'd moved completely online in terms of my own coaching. Um, I wanted to move online for a decent period of time and that happened officially in 2020 to be able to work with a slightly different clientele and, and work with people who were looking to take their own physique to that same place as well. And for me, it was a very important thing to be able to show that I could do that myself. A very important thing to be like, right, I'm going to I'm gonna carry, like, show this, I'm going to leave from the front, I'm going to take my body to that place, I'm going to mentally, physically test myself and do all these different things. So then if a client comes to me, there's that validation of, right, Al's been able to do that. Okay, brilliant, I can relate to that person. They know I can relate to them and suddenly that trust and that confidence is built because I've been there myself. So as of September, October time, things really started to crank up. It was becoming much more a situation of, right, calories starting to get lower, cardio coming in uh, and essentially starting to accelerate that process as much as possible. Obviously, weight is coming down throughout all of this as well. Um, and then photo shoot dates got booked in. I was initially looking to do a photo shoot around January time. It ended up being February the 2nd, uh, this year, 2023. And a lot of people looked at that and they were like, why the hell are you dieting at that time of year? Like, what on earth are you doing? It means dieting over Christmas. It means dieting over winter when things are on paper quite a lot harder because you haven't got the sun outside. It's, the days are shorter. It ends up being walking around and doing steps when it's cold and it's dark and being up in the mornings when it's dark and all these different bits. But for me, that really appealed. 
I've, I've spoken about this a little bit before and I've, I've spoken about how there's a sadistic side to, to me where the more difficult something is and the less other people that are going to be doing it at the same time or the less people are going to be wanting to do that, the more exciting for me that becomes because it becomes much more the situation of, oh, there's only a handful of people that are willing to do this. I'm going to make myself one of them. So it ended up being a situation where as we got into November, December, January time, I was getting up at 5, 5.30 in the morning. It was pitch black outside. I was defrosting my car and then going to do cardio. But I, then I was leaving the gym just after six when it was, it was still dark and most people hadn't woken up. And, and that's the side of things I said that really appealed to me because it was like, yeah, there are a very small number of people doing this, but I'm getting a massive jump on the day, so I'm ahead of them. And not in an arrogant sense of being I'm better than, but I'm just ahead of that person for the day. Um, and then things really started pushing up and up. I got a situation where every day was just running like absolute clockwork. Every day was absolute efficiency. I was actually enjoying it. I was loving that side of the process. I was sitting there on the bike 45 minutes, drinking a coffee, listening to a book. And I was like, actually, I feel rough here, but this is one of my favorite parts of the day. I've got that solitude. I've got that chance to be able to learn. I've got a chance to be able to think. Um, and all this stuff then culminated up to doing the photo shoot on, I said February the 2nd this year. So that was, um, as of recording this, about four and a half weeks ago, about a month ago. Um, so I did that shoot, I ended up being about 90 kilos and, and leaner than the previous photo shoot done. So I was incredibly happy with the difference that came through from my physique. I'll show a little comparison up here in terms of the difference in terms of the kind of that before and after in terms of the, the two physiques I was able to bring. And yeah, I had an incredible time of the day, loved going through that process, but then also was very excited for what came next. Because I hadn't dieted for so long and I'd spent such a long period of time being able to gain and being able to grow, it was actually then quite strange going into a different mindset of dieting and being hungry, but that brought with it a heck of a lot of positives. Like I said, the efficiency to my day, the discipline of getting up every single morning, the black and white thinking of just having certain tasks that needed to be completed for that particular day. So I was really excited after the photo shoot ended to actually be able to take all of those positives, but also bring in other areas so the negatives from dieting could be taken away at the same time. So still keeping that discipline, still being up in the morning, still being as able to get an enormous amount of things done every single day, but then suddenly being able to eat at the same time. Having a brain back, being able to essentially run as a normal human being would be able to run on that day because I wasn't just walking around like a zombie. Being able to be social, being able to spend time with friends, with family, being able to spend loads of time and go for dinner with my girlfriend who I, who I live with, who realistically things have started to um, be more limited in terms of what we could do because we couldn't go out for meals. We couldn't kind of do normal things. So being able to go back into being a normal boyfriend for her was a, a huge part of what I wanted to bring back. And I'm very, very happy that, that is the case now. And all that now has meant that as we're now being four weeks post shoot, I'm in a situation where I'm like, right, perfect. I'm able to bring all these positives together and in a situation where everything is now running at as good a level as I can possibly make it. So the diet taught me an enormous amount of lessons. It, it brought out the best of me. And it's something I'll go into in future videos as I start to speak a little bit more about that prep. But it's now meant I'm in a situation where as I look at these next couple of years, this is the best opportunity I've ever had, I've ever had to build as much muscle as I can. As I've now been I'm 10 years deep into learning about my own body in terms of learning about training, in terms of like all these different variables that we can look at, I've been able to take all those positives from dying alongside all dying, all the positives from dieting, but also the positives I can bring back into my life. So now it's the time and now is a very, very exciting step of this journey as I start to go into the next couple of years. I've set aside these next couple of years to build as much muscle as physically as possible. And I'm going to be bringing you guys along for the journey so you can see exactly how I go about that at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a lot of content that's going to be coming up soon, going into training sessions, into full days of eating and how I get calories down to make that as efficient as possible. Like I said, I've not spoken too much about coaching here, but going into that balance of coaching alongside doing all this stuff at the same time, because I don't have the luxury of being a bodybuilder full time. I, I have that side of my life, which is very, very important. And it's, it's a, a key component in making me the person that I am today, but equally I balance that alongside working probably more than full-time hours at the same point and how I go about to make all those, all those two things as efficient as possible. So not being in a situation where I'm sacrificing my own goals, but equally I'm not sacrificing my work side of things because that is, again, it's a huge foundation of what I do and I can't afford to let that slip and I never want to because I'm one of these people that works an enormous amount and I love what I do as a job. I can genuinely say that. So I never want to be in this spot where that starts to slip either. There's also going to be little bits alongside that as well. So going into supplementation, into all the little things that, that build up through an extended period of time where you're looking to gain the extended off-season, you could call it. I don't tend to call it an off-season because I've not competed. I also don't tend to call myself a bodybuilder because I've not competed. Um, I just have bodybuilding as a hobby. But looking at all these different bits that make up that. And like I said, this is where, for me, this journey is a little bit different to a lot of the things that are out here on social media, on YouTube at the moment. Because yes, I've been through a diet. Yes, I've been through 
and very much an extreme over this last year, but there aren't a huge amount of people speaking about this other side, about the difficulties of, of adding muscle, of adding body fat, the ability to be able to eat enormous amounts of food every single day. Like I've been in situations where for six months I've had to eat five and a half thousand calories a day just to be able to get enough food into me. And I think for me, being able to showcase this journey is very, very important because it gives you guys the opportunity to learn from that. That opportunity to be able to see, oh, I'm in a situation where I'm like Al, I'm looking to build as much muscle as I can as well. I can learn from all the things that he has done wrong and all the tips and all the tricks that he can give me to also be able to make that as effective as possible. And so there are so many different facets that I'm going to be going into. I'm very, very excited to be able to show you guys those bits at the same time. But like I said, this first video is more just going through that, that stage of the journey, giving you a little bit more of an insight into me, a little bit more of an insight in terms of what is going to be coming up over these next couple of videos, over these next months, really still over these next couple of years, I'd say, because there's a heck of a lot of stuff being planned. Now, the next two videos I'm going to be showcasing on here, I'm going to be talking to you guys through. The first one is going to be a full day in the life. Like for me, I'm, I'm a huge fan of watching these on YouTube. I'm an absolute dweeb where I like getting that insight into how someone lives their life. I like getting that insight in terms of, oh, this is how they do everything on a daily basis. Like even in terms of like how they, how they live, what time they get up in the morning, what foods they're eating, all these different things that happen. But so I think especially for anyone who has a similar passion for bodybuilding and that even who is also just a coach at the same time, being able to showcase how I blend those two bits together for you guys will be very, very important. And the second video from there is going to be going deeper into a full day of eating. So calories for me at the moment are back into a moderate level, so about 3,500 calories a day. How I'm able to get that down at the moment, the foods that I'm selecting, the reason behind selecting those foods, and essentially going a little bit deeper and a bit more detailed into how that stuff is managed. So if you guys like the sound of that, if that is something you're interested in following on my journey, something you're interested in following, click the subscribe button now and make sure you don't miss out anything at all. Also, for a bit more details to stuff and essentially be able to watch stuff on a daily basis, my Instagram is alex underscore team pro coach. Give me a follow on there. It will be able to interact, we'll be able to chat about things. If you have any questions, it's a really easy place to be able to ask about bits on there at the same time as well. And like I said, it's also going to mean that you can see this stuff on a daily basis. You can see how I'm managing all these different bits and get a little bit more of an insight into my life at the same time as well. So like I said, they are the two main places to find me. Subscribe on here, follow me on Instagram. And I said, you can watch the journey and you can see how things go over these next couple of years. But any requests that you guys have for videos, any bits that you would like to see on this channel, any areas that you'd like to see me diving into over these, over these coming videos, any topics you want me to discuss a little bit further, drop them in the comments down underneath and we can see if we can get something sorted from there. But for the meantime, thank you guys very much for watching. A very, very warm welcome to my channel, like I said before. And I'm very excited to show what's going to be coming up for these next couple of years.